we just saw the CNN town hall with Joe Biden, where he said he wouldn't commit to canceling more than $10,000 worth of student debt. I don't necessarily know that Democrats would be open overall to Medicare for all. We know that Joe Biden wouldn't. So my question for you is, in times like this, where we don't have people in power that want to push for policies that we desperately need, especially Medicare for all during a pandemic, how do we fight for those types of things? Like, I know that organizing is important, but at the congressional level, like, how do you push for these policies when you have a party that isn't technically the opposition party, but they're in opposition to us? So how do you fight for that in these times? No, we got to continue. I mean, I wish I had a magic wand to, to make it happen automatically. I would definitely do that. They're really... I I want the American people to know that there really is no excuse in a hegemon nation for us to be the only industrialized nation not to push for Medicare for all for our people. Not just push, pass it. Just just, just flat out pass it. There really are no excuses for that. So for me, I mean, I, I, I don't have a, a magic wand to, to be able to do with this other than that pushing part is really what we must do. And we have to see the grassroots bubbling up in this country and to continue to be outraged by the fact that, especially as you just said, in a pandemic, that we, the collective we, whether they're Democrats, Republicans, however, this is not about their political leanings. It is about people literally dying and or losing their livelihoods. I don't know what else it takes to move people to Medicare for all. If this pandemic doesn't do it, we have to begin to question our commitment as a nation. So we're saying one thing, and I'm saying we, saying one thing, politicians are saying one thing, but they're actually doing another. You know, during the celebration of MLK, for example, Dr. the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., you got all these people quoting him, but they won't act in the same manner that he would act and that he encouraged all of us to act. Not in moments like this, especially we know that the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. supported uh, that he that he supported uh, health care. He talked about of all the injustices, you know, all of the things that he has seen. The injustice in health care was one of those. He talked about militarism, materialism and war. All of these things combined, and not just the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., there were other sheroes and heroes that were fighting at all times against the status quo. So what I would say, Michael, is that I don't want us to lose sight of why it is important to push and why the grassroots in this case is even more important than who is in the Congress and in the White House, because all of the great changes, social justice type changes that have ever happened in this country have come come from everyday people putting a little extra on their ordinary so that extraordinary things can happen. That's one part of it. The other part of it is that taking that righteous indignation and that anger to the ballot box at all times, making a demand and making sure that there are consequences to those demands, those things work in concert. So electing progressives on all levels of government, not just the Congress, and then making sure that there's a consequence for people not acting on the things that we need. That is how the change is going to come. There is no other way for that change to come but the bubbling up of the grassroots and having people in elected office who actually care more about the next generation than they care about their next election. We got to do it. There's, there's no other way that change happens.